And welcome, everybody, to your LSU football fix. Tonight's show is presented by Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Uh, they are your tailgating and home gating uh, headquarters for the 2022 season. Y'all make sure to go check them out at the corner of Jefferson and Airline, just behind Parkview Baptist. It's been quite the week for LSU. Miles Brennan calls it quits on football, kind of, kind of almost Andrew Luck style, just ups and he's gone. Uh, many people were expecting him to be the starter, and I reference uh, my Twitter polls I've ran throughout almost every step of the off season of. Who do you who would you like to see as LSU starting quarterback? And almost at every step of the process, Miles Brennan had about 50% of the vote of among the four guys. He was he was the front runner among the fan base. He was the familiar entity, and it looked like he was down to third strength. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh in other news, um, LSU got a big commitment tonight. LSU got a commitment from Wide receiver out of St. James, of course, you know, last year he played at Ascension Catholic, uh, but Kai Preen is now an LSU Tiger. And it's it's particularly notable because there, there was a lot of people bashing Brian Kelly for not being able to recruit the state well. Of course, that was the big knock. Oh, but Brian Kelly can't recruit, blah, 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 blah. Well, now, all of a sudden, quietly. He's locked up seven of the top 13 prospects in the, in the state. And he's been on a real hot run with Shelton Sampson. He's been uh, Ricky Collins. Of course, he got his quarterback. That's huge. That was almost our entire show last week. Uh, Tyree Adams is a guy uh, who, who on board now. Um, and you need to get these guys. People were freaking out. Oh, Arch Manning to Texas. Y'all guess what? I'm pretty sure LSU had Ricky Collins as their number one quarterback in the state. I I think about Brian Poley and and his connection to the Manning family. If they really wanted Arch Manning more than Ricky Collins, you don't think that Coach Poley could have used some connections to at least make a heavy push. LSU was never in it for Arch because they weren't pushing for him because they had other guys higher on their board. They basically whiffed on the national guys, the five-star guys, right, and went straight to Ricky Collins after Dante Moore said, I'm going to Oregon. That was it. Derek Williams. Well, LSU's still working on Derek Williams. We'll see. This is going to be a long process. But, of course, Derek Williams going to Texas. Eli Holstein. Oh, he's going to A&M, and now he's going to Bama. That's a Baton Rouge quarterback. Well, I get it. There's two quarterbacks. But, like I said, Ricky Collins, you can only take one. I mean, I guess some years you might be able to add another, but you're really only going to get one blue chip quarterback. They don't want to commit with a bunch of other quarterbacks in the class. Not, not normally at least. Well, you got Ricky Collins, <laughs> two out of the top three guys going out of state. There's good reason for it. Tackett Curtis is of course a guy who, uh, I don't, I don't, LSU really wasn't high on his board from the get go. Maybe that's one that you could argue should have done better, but He's going to USC, and, and that's that. Osbury, Jaden Osbury, the talented linebacker out of Notre Dame. I'm um, sorry, out of University Lab, uh, U High there. And right on LSU's campus, he's going to Notre Dame. We kind of knew that was coming a long ways out. The Osbury boys both wanted to get out of their father's shadow and, and go elsewhere. Now, Jordan Matthews is maybe one you can put on the coaching staff because they had to – you know, they they by the time they offered Jordan Matthews the corner cornerback out of Woodlawn, the damage had been kind of done there. Uh, they they were already a little upset. Uh, he had some making up to do. That's what he told me when I, I talked to him five minutes after Brian Kelly offered him. He said, "Well, uh, uh, LSU's got some making up to do." And uh, lo and behold, yesterday morning, he's going to Tennessee. But then you've got. You know, uh, the, rounding out the top 13, you got Kai Preen on board now. Trey Holly on board. Omarion Miller, 
Tyree Adams, all, Kylan Jackson. It's been a real good streak for LSU. And I'm looking, they actually uh, looks like one of the services updated the, their rankings. So I'm, I'm actually, and it looks like that was today, actually. So my top 13 is a little off. Ricky Collins goes up a little bit. All right. So out of your top 16 in state, Trey Holly, Kai Preen, then you got Ricky Collins, Tyree Adams, Ky, uh, Kylan Jackson, K- Caleb Jackson, Shelton Sampson, the five star receiver. So that that's seven, y'all. I mean, this is this has been a good streak. Um, this is this class is basically tied for it, it's essentially tied for for fifth in the country with Georgia right now. It's right there. All right, let's see what's going on with people here. If the starting quarterback goes down, does Howard give up his red shirt for the season? Um, I'm not sure. They would. I mean, you can oftentimes have your backup quarterback play just four games. That's not unheard of. Uh, I, I would say that if if starter quote goes down now, you're still going to only play Walker in reserve situation. BK take over. What's up, Preston? Hey, what's up, man? Ahmad Rashad. Anyone want to say Jaden Daniels is a starter? Here's your chance. Um, mm, y'all, we had a very interesting Twitter space last night. It was it was absolutely fiery. Um, Jaden Daniels' mom popped in and talked about a lot of the criticism he's dealt with, and uh, a lot of uh, those the, the 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 just the adversity he had to overcome. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on um, at, at the Arizona State. Just a lot of just wild stuff. He didn't have a dedicated quarterback coach. The receivers were in and out. It was a lot of a lot of chaos for him. Um, long story short, uh, they feel very comfortable that he's in Baton Rouge now. I'll be still dealing with criticism, uh, of course, and I don't think that's ever going to go away. Um, but he, you know, he's in a quarterback battle, and, and they feel confident in the coaching and and players around him. They're very excited about those receivers. She, she spoke a lot about the receivers, so that was very interesting. Um, hmm. Well, it's funny, funny you mention um uh is Jaden Daniels the starter now because they talked to Jaden Daniels today. And uh I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on the screen here. Let's see. They talked to him at practice. It's one of his first media availabilities. Of course, all this is available on tigerbait.com. Uh I'm gonna show y'all how no, this is all available to Tigerbait subscribers. So uh, y'all make sure to go sign up and and all that good stuff, so you can get all these clips. You can watch the full clip online right now. Tell me about the football though. What what are, what are they making you better at? I guess? Yeah, I mean, uh, just keep, uh, not just me, but keeping all the quarterbacks on our p's and q's. Um, you know, uh, we have a great room. Uh, it doesn't matter who's going to start here. I know that we all help each other prepare uh, the best that we can. You know, to go out there and help the team win. So for me personally, just come here and uh, you know teaching nuts and other things I have just in case, you know, they are the starter uh, that they, they can learn from older guys that play some, some years, you know, they're great players, uh, great guys. So uh, really just on that leadership part. Have they told you you're the starter yet? They haven't, they haven't announced anything. So they asked him directly, <laughs> they told you you're the starter now and now, no, they, you have it. So let me show you a little bit of a tigerbait.com interface here. You can uh, check out all the, player interviews we have here available let's hear from uh nussmeyer what, what did he say about it i don't know if i read this and it was accurate or i just read it but did you say that you want to break away from that gunslinger uh label is that something you actually said and is that something you feel yeah um i mean that's something i've said before um i think it got lost in translation a little bit um you know as far as you know i'm still gonna you know take shots and uh, any quarterback should, you know, when, when they're given to you though, I think is the biggest thing that I've learned is uh, take them when they're given to you, take them when you're supposed to take them and um, just continue to lead the offense and move the chains is what I've been taught my whole life. So, what did you learn out of last year's I mean, games and actions you saw? I mean, it was definitely an interesting season. You know, a lot went on, uh, especially being a true freshman. So, but I learned a lot um, from the past staff, from Max, uh, from Miles, you know, I learned a lot from those guys. And, um, you know, I'll cherish some of those moments and some of those memories, you know, from my whole career. As far as football, anything that you, t- you took away that you worked on over the summer? Um, I think 
learning in different situations, being in different environments. You know, I'm a coach's kid, uh, so my father's been in the SEC a lot. So I've been in the, the uh, as crazy as the environments can get. You know, I've been in Tiger Stadium on the opposite side, and I've been in the swamp. You know, I've been in all these. Anyways, there's Nussmeyer. He goes on to talk about they they ask him, have they told you that Jaden's the starter? And he, he says, No, they haven't. Have they told you that? But you guys probably know better than I do. So the reports of Jaden Daniels being named the starter are a little overblown. Um I, I do think he's got a leg up in the competition. Uh, maybe that's because last week Nussmeyer was a leg down. He was out. But I, I don't think that this battle's over yet. I think we're going to uh, see this uh, rage on for quite a while. Um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about how I think Miles Brennan do, does. Does losing Miles Brennan hurt the team? I'll talk about that in a second. I do want to thank my sponsor tonight, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Remember, y'all, they're your tailgating headquarters and home quarters for the 2022 season. Okay. If you're looking to impress people or have a good just cookout in general, that's your, that, that's your way to go. Um, yeah, get, give them a call, visit them, Tremontes.com. Uh, they are located right behind Parkview Baptist on Jefferson and Airline. Uh, good stuff, y'all. Yeah, let's, let's hear from them, and I will be right back. Tremontes has meat, Tremontes has seafood, Tremontes has much more tailgating and home gating platters, huge wine and liquor selection, beer and all the spices you need, chairman reserve and wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs, 20 flavors of sausage for the grill, daily lunch specials and game processing, on-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontes.com. Thank you, Tremontes, for making uh, your LSU football fix uh, possible every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So y'all, please go check out uh, Tremontes.com. And support our sponsor. Let them know Tiger Bait sent you in so that they know their sponsorship is getting their money's worth. Um, so talking about Brennan and if it hurts the team. Uh, first off, should you be upset that he's quitting the team? Is he a quitter? I don't look at it like that, y'all. I know a lot of people are getting on him and this has been a rough off season, But I look at that as a guy who's been around for this program for five years. Uh, he's been hurt. He's been in and out. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a rough career. Um, but he overcome a lot of that, and he still strapped it up and competed for the starting spot. And it looked like he lost out. And, you know, it's not it's not our place to judge what is going on inside his head. It's just not our place, y'all. I mean, he hmm. – we can't judge his mental health, his emotional health, his physical health, uh, and what's best for his future. Uh, don't be mad at a kid because he decided to do something for his future. Um, let's see. I've got Nick Diaz in the back lobby working out a little technical difficulty. I've been excited. He's an interesting guest. He has a uh, some great monologues on his podcast I listen to quite often. He's uh he's been pretty vocal about liking uh Nussmeyer. So in just a bit, I'm gonna bring him up and we'll continue talking about this uh quarterback situation here. Hopefully, um somebody doesn't give us any problems here. Let me uh get to a few comments here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Someone's complaining about uh, the recruiting rankings. What's up, PG? What's up, Esteban? Esteban's been here since show number one. We love me some Esteban. Let's see here. Right. Press, I'd see uh, as upbeat about Nuss as was he knows it's going to be a two quarterback loca rotation to start. Both Nuss and Jaden Daniels represent LSU very well. I agree. Uh, I don't think I think either one of them who gets to take the first snap will have to earn taking the last snap. Uh, I think we're going to see some rotation, uh, and I think if Nuss is the starter, you're still going to see Jaden Daniels out there playing no matter what. He's too talented to keep off the field, uh, especially with his legs. They, he he acknowledged that uh, Brian Kelly timed him running. Uh, at 21 miles an hour in practice. All right, I'm gonna add Nick to the stream. It's giving me a funny icon 
when he's in backstage for me. But we'll see what happens when I bring him in. If we get some technical difficulties, we'll all grow together here tonight. <laughs> and there we go. See, um, looks like it's showing screen link. Uh, Nick, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? What's going on, man? I think your video is being a little funny tonight. Uh, uh, let me see here. I put on makeup and fix my hair and everything. Well, when everybody knows how great looking you are. But anyways, we'll talk a little bit about <laughs> it. Man, so Miles leaves. How much do you think that hurts? How much do I think that hurts? Um, honestly, not at all, because you have a guy in Garrett Nussmeyer who uh, – not Garrett Nussmeyer, excuse me. I I'm running through all these quarterbacks' names in my head, in and out. Yeah. Um, Walker Howard, thank you. That's how I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, Walker right. Howard, who was you know the consensus before he got hurt his senior year of high school. He was the consensus number one uh, quarterback in the country, according to 24-7 um, Sports. Mm -hmm. on their consensus rankings. And I think he was number two on just their individual rankings. So as, when it comes to just, you know, competition, sure, you can say, you know, iron sharpens iron, um, competition breeds success, you know, all that stuff. And that's fine. And sure, I believe in it. But at the end of the day, everyone's like, well, now you're two plays away from, from you know, Walker Howard being your starting quarterback, you know, at Auburn. Okay, if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. If if butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Sure, a lot of things could happen. Ryan Kelly could, you know, get in a car accident before the Alabama game. Sure, whatever. Um, but do I do I think it hurts the team? No, I, I don't. I don't think I don't think it hurts the team from a competitive standpoint. And I also don't think. I, I mean, I don't want to speculate. I don't know how much it hurts the team from a emotional leadership standpoint. Uh, that would be more of a concern than, say, on the field or competition at practice. But I don't well, want to speak on that part. Uh, I hate to phrase it like this because it sounds like a big shot at Miles Brennan. In my opinion, I, I kind of think that him not being there actually kind of helps the team because it looked like he was third string. Um, mm -hmm. And it really just kind of. It's a huge distraction. You've got a majority of the fan base vocally behind him. So, you, you know, if any of the other two guys were to struggle, they're all going to be calling for him, and that's a big distraction you got to deal with. And not to mention, you know, you only get so many reps at practice. It's kind of a good thing to move those reps on over to Walker Howard and develop him this year. What, what Do you think – do you kind of see where I'm coming from? Because um, there we go, we fixed it. Um, yeah, I lost you. So, so wait, wait, wait. All right, we'll, we'll start trying, over again. Do you see where I'm coming from? That um, Miles Brennan uh, not having him might actually help. Uh, yes, I absolutely do. Because look, I, I've always believed in something that uh, Jeremy Foley, the former Florida athletic director, who you know was one of the best athletic directors in the history of the Southeastern Conference, he said something when he fired Ron Zook that I always thought was just kind of great for the business of sports. And he said, if something is imminent or if something is inevitable, then just make it imminent. No doubt. In other words, if it's going to happen anyway, then just let's rip off the bandaid and do it now. And he fired him, you know, with one game left before the season and ends up hiring Urban Myers. Like, let's just get it out in the open and let's keep going. So I think the tension – um, also with, when it comes to the team and also the quarterback room and also Walker Howard, because everyone knows Walker Howard wasn't going to play this year anyway, outside of, you know, some snaps and a blowout loss or, or whatever, or a blowout win, let's hope. Um, but yeah, as far as just practice reps go, yes, I, I do think it absolutely helps. I think the coaches would even say that it, um, with Miles Brennan, unfortunately getting hurt last year also helped somewhat in the development of Garrett Nussmeyer. They sh they saw that he was, you know, starting to get into his own a little bit from spring up until fall when he started getting all of the second team reps. So, yeah, I, I buy that. And I, I think that you brought up some really good points, that, that Jeremy Strickland quote. It's just so mm. – Strickland, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, mm. So it's right, right on point because – you know you want Walker eventually. Like, that is your crown jewel of the quarterback room. 
And it's hard not to notice watching these practices uh, and all the film from it. Um, he looks sharp out there. He looks really sharp throwing the ball around. But, I mean, I think we can all agree. I mean, you really don't want him to have to be your starter this year, right? I mean, that, that that's like a – you don't want to throw him out there to the fire, right? Uh, right, absolutely. Um, you, you don't want that. I think the only concern that somebody else would have is what happens if Jaden Daniels gets beat out or uh, at, at any point. It could be next week. It could be in week four, week five of the season, and he just sort of gets you know the the grumpies and for or something, and he just decides to leave. Um, then you're stuck with Walker Howard as your backup. And then really you're in a more realistic situation with this offensive line, which still has a lot of question marks of, okay, Garrett Nussmeyer likes to run around, even though, you know, he's sort of trying to get rid of that gunslinger mentality and narrative. Yeah. Like not every um, play is fourth and 13, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Um, but he's still a guy that likes to take chances, which by the way, I love in my quarterback. I don't want my quarterback to be too ro- robotic. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're still with this offensive line. And as good as, you know, Will Campbell may or may not be as a true freshman, he's still a true freshman. And as much as he's I'm a believer in him, freshman, though, isn't he? yeah. And, and you're still asking a lot. And then you're in a more realistic situation with Walker Howard um, getting, you know, thrown into the fire in the worst possible way. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer that you can completely devastate a career by throwing out a true freshman before he's ready. You know, I mean, maybe in situations where you've got veteran units across the board and, you know, you got receivers who've been there for years and offensive line and everything's in place. You can kind of plug them in and let them be a game manager. I I, I look back and think, Hey, we got your camera on. Let's go. There we go. I told y'all he looks great. When Um, in doubt, go to settings. (laughs) <laughs> and there it is out of my league podcast so mm-hmm. now you get the plug in too so there we there go see i worked hard for this uh, absolutely man nice setup and look y'all just i want to give him a major <laughs> shout out i think i messaged him at 7 40 to come on i had another guest back out who i will not name publicly but he's a good guy i like him a lot so i won't rat him out but uh uh nick came in and stepped up. I said, you know, this is a guy I've listened to oftentimes and it, it, he, he just, he can cover a wide variety of topics. Um, but anyway, so you've been pretty, I don't want to say pushing, but you obviously love what you see out of Nussmeyer. And even after the spring game, I, you put out some points about how he, you know, who's going to improve more in between you know uh, with with more reps you know the the young freshman quarterback with a lively arm the six year senior or you know the the veteran guy who's who's played 27 guy games what do you like about nuss uh well it's it's interesting that you kind of bring that up because while yes i do push garrett nussmeyer it's 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 still a lot on hope because it's not so much, it's, it's so much of like, I don't know if I have a full opinion of him because there's only so much I've seen, mm-hmm. but every time I see him, he gets better. There's not really a thing that I've seen him do that he's not capable of doing. So let me, let me use this analogy. If you're hiring someone, right. And you know, you know, they're young, you know, they're green uh, and they're just not quite experienced. And the only way they're going to get better is to get experience. Well, all you have to do is not necessarily look at their worst moments, but look at their best moments and be like, okay, I know they have it in them. I know they have it. Whatever it is, I know they have it. And it's great and it's special. And when it happens, it makes you go, wow. And we've seen that at Garrett Nussmeyer in practices, um, well, yeah. spring games, uh, the limited time that he has played. We've seen some wow stuff. Some flashes, and, right? Yeah, some flashes. But – when you consider, A, it's a spring game, which I still have a different theory about spring games than maybe other people, that I do think they reveal more truth than maybe we let on if we look at the history. And also the fact that his dad is a professional quarterback, so he he knows you know what he's looking at and what he's doing and how to progress and how to work. And then the fact that, you know, if we're going to make the argument about Jaden Daniels, which we'll get to in a second, mm-hmm. 
about him, you know, oh, he was in a horrible situation. Well, so was Garrett Nussmeyer. Um, you know, Jaden Daniels had a former NFL head coach, and he still had guys, you know, other former NFL head coaches as analysts. Whereas you had a guy in Ed Ogeron who had just, look, fallen off a cliff. We don't have to redo rehash that thing. Of course, right. And plus Jake Peets, who, for as, as best as – I think T-Bob had a great quote – it's just negligent. It was just totally incompetent and negligent, and he just couldn't explain Jake Peets as a play caller. When you take that into play, you have to use that argument for Garrett Nussmeyer. So I can't necessarily look at the bad and think, well, that's 100% on Garrett Nussmeyer and necessarily do the same, not do the same thing with sort of Jaden Daniels as well. So when it comes to, I know I'm kind of you know going all over the place here with Garrett Nussmeyer, but for me, it's just, his throws, he can make every single throw on the field. He has better touch than Miles Brennan. He gets rid of the ball uh, better than Miles Brennan. Um, he he has, and I've done a horrible job, I think, of explaining this in the past, although I've tried. When you see Garrett Nussmeyer just sit in the pocket, it's like it's like watching a boxer dance in the ring. Like there's this fluidity that I've heard quarterback coaches uh, that have podcast I've listened to, studying stuff I've, I've heard from guys who teach stuff in the NFL to college. You want your quarterback to have this fluidity. I remember people saying that when Tom Brady took over for um, – uh, this was before I could remember, but when Tom Brady took over for Drew Bledsoe, one of the things that people who said they liked Tom Brady more than Drew Bledsoe from the very beginning was, well, if you look at Tom Brady, like he's not athletic, but he's very bouncy. He's very fluid. It's 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 just it looks effortless for him. It's like he's a he's a he's a boxer dancing in the ring. Like I it just everything just is all in sync from head to toe. Right. And I see that with Garrett Nussmeyer. I see that it that fluidity, and it may sound ridiculous, but it is something. I see him throw on time. I don't see him hesitate. I see him you know in spring against its very vanilla defenses. He's not hesitating. You know, Miles um, Brennan was hesitating. Well, he understands the defense. He's been there for five years. Uh, Jaden Daniels, I mean, he's going up against a basic man-to-man defense, cover two or whatever it was, every single play. Mm -hmm. Sure, he's not used to throwing to those wide receivers, and I'm not judging him on his one spring game. But when I also watch some of the stuff as Arizona State, it's like, okay, dude, a curl route is a curl route. And he's he's, he's open. Like, hit him. Like, he's open. Just- and, and I agree. And look, he gets a ton of excuses for his time at Arizona State. I'll be very forthcoming with that. That Like, there was a lot of things that weren't go- going very well for him at Arizona State. But I-, I looked at the film, and I looked at full game films, and there there's some accuracy issues. There were. But maybe a, a full-time quarterback coach and, uh, uh, you know, a guy like Brian Kelly can help him improve. I don't, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't improve. Yeah, look, I know I, this is something that I, I got attacked on Twitter today, big time. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's it, well, it happens. Um, you yeah, know that I'm just it, pushing right? a narrative. What I've said from the very beginning. By the way, I was on the Jaden Daniels bus during spring. Like mm-hmm. the whole reports about Garrett Nussmeyer was in this. I was like, BS, man. Like I don't buy it. That's just politics. That's just mm-hmm. stuff getting leaked out. I, I don't buy it. But then I started to, you know, challenge myself and be like, okay, well, hold on a second. Let me just not just go with the, what the majority is thinking and let me actually do some right. research and not be susceptible to groupthink. And in my research, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. And I don't think that the excuse of or reason of, oh, well, he didn't have a full-time quarterbacks coach. His quarterbacks coach was also his offensive coordinator the majority of offensive coordinators in college football are also the quarterback coach. I just, maybe that will help him, Mm -hmm. but that's not a reasonable excuse for the 130 something programs in college football or a hundred or so programs in college football, where just like everybody else or almost everybody else, their quarterback coach is also their offensive coordinator. Yeah. That's what helps Jaden Daniels. Then I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. But until then, I have to go off of what I've seen and the excuses that I've heard and the f- stuff that I've watched, the the film that I've watched where you, they have every single throw that he made against every single game that I saw that's on YouTube, stuff I've tried to find. 
it's just not an excuse. I just have to go off of that information. And my information is Jaden Daniels does not throw consistently in the intermediate passing game, plain and simple. Yeah. And, and he, he's, he's definitely, it's, uh, you know, the intermediate is where he's taken a lot of his criticism on accuracy issues. I'll say this watching the Arizona state film. I also noticed that a lot of the intermediate routes, when you watch the actual full game film, not, you know, highlights stuff, they didn't call a ton of them. It was a lot of very dink and dunk stuff at the sidelines and the flats and then deep a lot of that. And I almost wonder like maybe if there should have been some, you know, some more, you know, that five to 10, 10, 15 yard range stuff in there. Uh, to kind of not give him super difficult passes, but uh, passes that, you know, will get some more yardage and be a little more productive, move the chains. We'll have to see. I can tell you they like to do that in the Denbrock system. Um, it's going to be interesting. It, it looks like like Jaden Daniels got the leg up right now, but uh, there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of time left, a lot of practices. I think I think tomorrow's scrimmage might be one of the, the more eye-opening ones uh of this off season it's gonna be it's gonna be big tomorrow we'll have mike scarborough out there doing all his thing getting all that film but i think that is where coaches will start to come close to making a decision is, is what they see tomorrow um so yeah, but, and just and just on that thing about why he, they weren't calling more intermediate passes coaches will tell you with their play calling don't listen to what coaches say mm -hmm. listen to what they do them not calling a lot of those tells you what they think of him as an intermediate passer. Because even in the passes that he completed, you know, he would complete some, but then there were others that he even completed where the receiver mm -hmm. had to kind of fall back and right. you know, catch the ball. And another thing that I've just, I just still can't believe people are doing this is like, well, I saw the stats. He completed 65% of his passes last year. That was number one in the Pac-12. I don't care, Nick, how much film you think you watched. I'm like, okay. But if you had watched the film that I had watched, you would know that the majority of those passes were behind the line of scrimmage, yeah. dink and dunks, and that's why the percentage went up. Stats are misleading, but – Right. Know. And I understand it doesn't always work this way. I, I can't help but, but think back to 2019, that game against Oregon, where Oregon was on their way to the playoffs, and then Jaden Daniels went off. He threw for 400 on them as a freshman. And it's like, what was going on where, I mean, and he, he had two interceptions that year, by the way, 17 touchdowns, two interceptions. I mean, if he had continued to progress forward, we, we'd be talking about a guy who's already in the NFL. But it seemed that something just just went off the rails there. And, and from everybody I'm talking to at Arizona State, <laughs> just <laughs> – Everything seemed to collapse around him. You know, receivers going out, drops, offensive line couldn't block, coaching was was problematic. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, a, a lot of those things seem to be in better place at LSU. And it seems that whoever takes that first snap, I mean, the, they're going to have to play incredibly well to to keep it. You know what I mean? Like 60% like completion, you know, 12 of 20 with a touchdown and an interception – isn't going to be good enough to to keep either of them on the bench. I mean, do you, do you see a big rotation like that? So what I've said since I think the end of spring, which is this: the answer to this quarterback puzzle that we've all been trying to solve with LSU football since the beginning of spring, I think that puzzle, the answer to that puzzle, the key you know, corner pieces and everything in the middle has been right in front of us. And it's Brian Kelly's past with his previous dual quarterback systems in 2012 him. and in 2018. Funny enough, two years that he went undefeated in the regular season. I don't think that's going to happen this year. But uh, my point is, is that if you look at 2012, the year that they went, went to um, the BCS title game in, against Alabama, it was Tommy Reese, who was a pocket passing quarterback, and the redshirt freshman, um, Everett Golson. Both of them were kind of in this dual quarterback system for through the first four or five weeks of that season. I think what happened was is Everett Golson was kind of beating him out, and then Tommy Reese yeah. got some got in trouble off the field, if I remember correctly. And then Everett Golson, it was just, you know, it's like, hey, let's just make this guy the starter now because he's progressed. Right. He was the young guy who had no experience. Well, he did he it again. Over. What was that? 2017, he had two guys in there, if I recall right. 2017, he had – 
Brandon Wimbush and Ian Book, but Brandon Wimbush took, <clears throat> excuse me, Brandon Wimbush took the majority of, I'm falling over I'm trying myself. to think here. Am, am, am I messing up my names here? Because it, it was a <laughs> running quarterback who got drafted by the Browns, and I don't know why I'm blanking. Oh, on no, you're thinking of uh, – He beat LSU. <laughs> it was like his, his first game starting for a while, and he came in and beat Ed Ogeron no, and you, LSU. No, you're thinking of Malik um, Zaire. Malik, Malik Zaire, that's no, Malik it, Zaire yeah. didn't get drafted by the Browns. He ultimately got hurt the next – so he beat LSU in 2014 in the Music City Bowl. He gets hurt at the beginning of the 2015 season. And then, um, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm forgetting his name, too. Um, Malik uh, Rozier. No, 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 who was it? This guy who got drafted Rozier. by the Browns who mm -hmm. replaced him, number 14. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, he's the guy who ended up getting drafted in the second round. But in 2017, where he, they played LSU again, Brandon Wimbush was the majority of the starter. Heiser. Deshaun Kaiser, thank you. I knew yeah. I knew Kaiser. Um, Two beer in the chat with that assist. I'll give him a shout out. Um, it was Brandon Wimbush in 2017 who took the majority of the snaps. And then Ian Book came in and they they beat LSU. Right. That started a quarterback controversy for the 2018 season when they went to the playoffs. Right. And same thing. It was Game Four against Wake Forest. They finally Brandon Wimbush just as a passer just wasn't there. And finally, they in the second half, I think they just went with Ian Book, and Ian Book balled out, and they scored like 50-something points. And then Ian Book was just the quarterback, you know, the rest is history. So, mm -hmm. and, and in both situations, the it was a dual quarterback system. But the younger guy who had hardly any experience, who was either a redshirt freshman or a redshirt sophomore, ended up winning the job in game four or five. And if you look – at LSU schedule, their first four games, neutral site slash home game against Florida State, a right. not very good Florida State team. Southern at home win. Mississippi State, who I think is going to be very good this year, but you get them at home coming off of Southern. And then at home against New Mexico the following week. Right. You've got four games. Winnable. Absolutely. To, to really kind of ease yourself into this with Garrett Nussmeyer, if the only thing that's holding you back is, well, he started zero games and – Jane Daniels has started 27 or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and I, I tell people about the schedule. I'm like, it's not the first half that's the problem. I mean, I, I, it's not unreasonable to think LSU could be six and oh coming out of that first half. I don't, I, I see it five and one, but uh, I mean, it's that second half where things get really brutal. I mean, this is a rough back end of the schedule, uh, no doubt. And you're going to want to have your guy. So like you want to have your your plan in place by the time you're going into that stretch with all those teams in the SEC, and I, I can't imagine that we'll still be playing you know uh, carousel quarterbacks by then you know, but I don't know we'll see. So are you are you thinking that you're you're predicting it will be Nussmeyer as the starter? Is that what you think? Well, um, I, I'm I'm horrible at you know, coming up with predictions because before the fall camp started, I kind of, I, I was like, okay, it's Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer. Right. Jaden Daniels will take the first snap and then Garrett Nussmeyer will eventually win the job at some point in the season. Yeah. But I, I kind of chickened out and hedged my bet <laughs> and said, oh, Miles Brennan, because why not? Right. Uh, wow. <laughs> I should have stuck with my gut instinct. Yeah, That's right. what I need to learn to do. Um, do who, who do I think takes the first snap against Florida State? I don't know. And quite honestly, I've told people that I don't really care who takes the literal first snap against Florida right State. Um, I think eventually what's going to happen is, while I do believe that Jaden Daniels can have a good season with LSU and these weapons and these play callers, and it's a better situation that he's been in since his 2019 season, I do believe that. But when push comes to shove – like everyone talks about his athleticism and that he throws a beautiful deep ball. And, and Jaden Daniels does. He throws a beautiful deep ball. But eventually what's going to happen is the defense will figure that out very quickly if they haven't already and watching his stuff at Arizona State. It's almost 30 games. That's kind of a lot that he has no intermediate game against bad Pac-12 defenses like Stanford and USC particularly, which is what I watch a lot of. And right. I'm like, brother, that ain't going to be that open in the SEC. 
what's going to happen is, is that those defenses are going to commit and be like, hey, you have no intermediate game. The intermediate game, if people can learn anything from this, from what I'm saying, the intermediate passing game is ultimately what makes you an efficient offense. You can be explosive. You can watch Jane Daniels' highlights and be like, hey, he's explosive in the run game and he throws a beautiful deep ball, and all of that is true. That is not how you consistently win football games and not how you consistently put up points. Case in point, the last two years with LSU football, their intermediate passing game was a struggle. Um, they couldn't run the ball particularly well, which was their big problem. And also, they were, had great explosive plays. They put up some pretty good statistics in the passing game if you just look at blind statistics. I mean, they I mean no- Max Johnson was like third in school history with passing touchdowns last year. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you don't have efficiency. And the problem is, is that efficiency is not sexy. Efficiency is not on a highlight reel. And fans are, and I was guilty of this too. I was guilty of this too. I make no judgments, LSU fans. I was guilty of it as well in spring. That's you can't see efficiency in a highlight reel. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, all right, we're gonna address this real quick. Edward Underwood. He he uh, Underwood. I'm sorry, Edward. Edward Underwood. It's a that's a bit of a tongue twister name. Um, so he he hadn't heard anybody critique Nuss. All right, well let's take turns. You criticize Nuss, then I'll criticize Nuss, just so everybody hears the fairness in this in this podcast. Yes. Okay, so the re- the reason why I haven't criticized Nuss is because there's very little to criticize him on. Like, there's just not enough for me to criticize him. Which um, is a criticism in and of itself, wouldn't you say? Like, there's just not enough there. I mean, yeah, that's what I keep on saying. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a definitive answer on Nussmeyer. I'm not even sure Nussmeyer is better. I just what I've seen from him has more potential. Anyways, um, what I will say about Nuss is I want to see him truly. Um, not feel like he has to make big time plays every play. I feel like in spring last year, he had this sort of gunslinger mentality, which he can deny all he wants, but he did because he knew he wasn't going to start. He was just Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm going to like Brett Favre when he was at Southern Miss or when he was in his early days before he became a starter with the Green Bay Packers, he said his mentality was, Hey, just go out and just sling it as hard as you can and show them the wow factor just to get them noticed. You know, you don't get noticed in practice by being safe. And so Mm, I think that's what his mentality was. And I think he was still trying to break out of that. But here's the thing. He needs to prove that he's broken out of that. And maybe he has. I don't think he'd be in this quarterback competition if he hasn't. But I need to see that, okay, you, you can do the stuff that your dad has taught you. You can do the NFL stuff. You can check down and play the quarterback position, but you're choosing not to in those things that I have seen limited as they may be. Um, prove it to me. Prove it to me. That's a choice that you make. Prove it. And I, I mostly agree with your assessment on the criticism of Nussmeyer. I'm going to tell you this is that if the Nussmeyer who showed up against Arkansas – shows up this fall. I mean, he's not going to stand a chance. I, I, I It's going to be – Dane Daniels will take every snap. He has to improve. Nussmeyer's issues are all above the shoulders. Uh, he, you know, just terrible pocket presence, a little bit too – I mean, he's so gunslingery. Like I said, my my analogy for it is every play is fourth and, fir- four, fourth and 13 with him. And you just got to calm down. And, and let the game slow down, make your reads. I do think having a competent coach like a Brian Kelly, one of the easiest things to do to coach a quarterback is say, hey, pause. Against this defense, you read your, you know, your, your reads go as following. You see your safety over there. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And here's your read. One, two, three. Slow it down. And I, I think he will be able to improve. I think if you play him, you're still going to take some lumps because we still saw those – same kind of bonehead decision making in the spring game, although it was less. And I, I, I do think it'll continue to be less and less. But man, his arm talent, it, it is, it's a very evident that he can just sling it and put it anywhere you need. And if you're going with Nuss, I think it's a guy you're going with, you're taking your growing pains and you're going with it because you see that just that top end. I think Jaden Daniels, having played as many games, he's going to be the more intelligent quarterback right now just 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 with his experience and uh he's gonna be the guy who's making better decisions and that's gonna that's gonna be 
what Nussmeyer has to fight against. But that being said, I think Nussmeyer can move enough, and that arm talent truly is a difference maker. I've seen some throws he made that were just like, man, kind kind of jaw dropping. Um, so there you go, there you go. So so we got our criticism out of Nussmeyer. Uh, nobody's nobody's gonna accuse us of of being homers. You you heard it right there, um, Nick. I heard a couple people kind of are hearing about you for the first time in the chat. Uh, tell, uh-huh. tell, tell, tell the good folks here what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you coming on to, uh, you know, talk and I get to, you know, promote my stuff a little bit, do a little shameless plug. Um, yeah. So uh, I have a show uh, on YouTube. It's called out of my league. Uh, the um, it's not labeled out of my league on YouTube. It's just my name, Nick Diaz, D I A S like you see at the bottom. Um and uh, what I basically like to do is, uh, as I say at the beginning of every episode, I like to, uh, you know, long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to keep it interesting. I do mm-hmm. short little monologues, as, uh, as you described. Yeah, yeah is, that's it's, it's what they come off as. They're, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so a little, little, little kind of like monologues, a little uh, food for thought for the day. And I usually do about two per day, uh, definitely during football season. Uh, I'll definitely do two per day. I may some days do three with Saints and LSU. And uh, yeah, I just, I I try to be different. I try to tell a story and be, it's going to sound pretentious, but be philosophical and just give you a a really food for thought as opposed to this play, this, you know, on this play, this happened. And then Nussmeyer threw this pass and then Jane Daniels ran this play. Like, I don't do that. I do something, uh, I try to be unique to stand out. Uh, I gave you a little bit of taste today with uh, some of my analogies, but uh, yeah, um, I have a background in acting as well. I, I studied journalism, have a degree from uh, Mass Comm from LSU. LSU. You're a man shipper. Yeah, I'm a man shipper, man. What's up, man? All the way. I'm a man shipper. Let's go. Yeah, part of the cult, absolutely. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I have a background in uh, acting. I studied acting for about five and a half, six years, and so I use that in my monologues and performances that I do, and. Uh, yeah, just give me a shot. I'm a little different, um, but I think you'll like me. Uh, I do get animated sometimes. Language can get a little crass when I'm angry, like uh, particularly yesterday about Miles Brennan. Um, but you know, I'm not. I'm not like a raunchy guy, dirty guy. I don't try to do all that stuff. It's just dudes talking sports. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. What did you think about that space last night? Because I saw you were in there. Yeah, I was in there. I was just wanted to hear what was going on. I didn't realize Jaden Daniels' mom was in there. Um, yeah. What's that? Well, that's what I got attacked for on, on Twitter today is why didn't you say anything? You scared? I'm like, well, I'm not going to get in a fight with like, why would I fight yeah. Jane Daniels mom? Yeah. Like, I like, I like, I like when I saw she was in there, I was like, Oh, I want to hear what she has to say. Yeah. And there was nothing she said that I didn't necessarily disagree with, or that surprised me of what a mom, a mom would say about her baby. You know, because that's what yeah. she is uh, about. She went out there and defended her, her son, and, and she talked about the adversity he's overcome. And there were facts. I'm like, and so, and plus, like, even if she said something that I thought that, that I disagreed with, I'm not going to get in a fight with a player's mother on a Twitter space. Like, come on. So, you know, whatever. I, that's I just wanted to clear that air because there were people that were coming after me, but. It's yeah. like, I'm not afraid of my opinions, but I'm also not going to get into a Twitter fight with a parent's mother. Right. And, you know, there's just no reason to, you know, to, I mean, when you evaluate sports, you want to be fair. I try to be as fair as possible when I'm evaluating players. And if I'm taking a criticism, I try to make sure it's very valid. But like, what's the point of just like throwing that criticism at, at his mom? You know, like, it's just, yeah. it's just there's the, it, these Twitter spaces. It's funny because is it content or is it just people hanging out in a room? It's kind of in that middle spot. Uh, uh, I, I will give Pooh Bear his little antagonizing line here for you. Are, are you going to apologize if he lights the world on fire? I, hey, here's another thing for people listening. If you don't listen uh, to me, um, if I always Always, and people who are faithful listeners of, uh, of me can attest to this. I always admit when I'm wrong because at the end of the day, bro, it's sports. Who cares? Right. Oh my God, somebody threw a ball better than I thought they did. Whoop de freaking do. Life, <laughs> like, uh, right. okay. I'll, yes, I'll gladly admit that I'm wrong because here's the thing it only means more people will show up and laugh at me. And, you know, that's just more great content for us yeah. to discuss. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've been wrong more times than I can count. I make fun of myself for being wrong because it's like, it's no matter how much time you spend studying and evaluating and looking at this and all that, it, sometimes things are just wonky and bizarre. I mean, I, I look at the whole Ogeron tenure and it's like, I thought he was the worst coach ever to be hired at LSU. And then, okay, he wins that national title. Now I look really dumb. Okay, well, and then he eventually gets fired anyway. So I just yeah. – does anybody know anything? And look, to do do Dobeezy here, is he going to critique Nuss? Uh, if you just missed it, we did spend like five straight minutes strictly critiquing Nussmeyer for the people who, who are desiring that. So uh, I, I gave Nick his chance to defend his criticism today um, and, and all that good stuff. Well, Nick. Uh, you already talked about your podcast. Tell the people where uh, they can follow you on Twitter or you know, any other miscellaneous plugs you may have. Absolutely. Oh, wait, maybe it. I don't want to send them to your Twitter today. Maybe that's a Well, no, I don't care. Bring them on. I'll bring them on. Or they can just <laughs> rewind this wonderful uh, stream that we have going and you know, understand that I'm not out to attack Jaden Daniels. If anything, for those of sure. you who are just joining, I was up on the Jaden Daniel, Daniels bus during spring and then over the summer, doing objective research, I have changed my mind. So I was a member of the Jaden Daniels Sam Club. And if he goes out and balls out, um, I'll become a Jaden Daniels fan then. So it's not a personal attack on yeah. Jaden Daniels or whatever. Anyways, um, as far as my Twitter. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to follow up on your comment there, too, just, just to kind of get this angle. How close do you think this quarterback race is? Do you, do you think it's really neck and neck or do you think? Maybe Nuss has a you, – you think Nuss might be a, a bit of a better quarterback significantly. Oh, a, like a better quarterback significantly? Oh, I don't know if he's better – Or is it like really tight? That's what I'm saying. Do, do you think the margin is wide or narrow? Like like what are you thinking? How tight I is think, this race? I think it's narrow um, simply because they see the potential that Nussmeyer has. But like I said at the end of the day – with my opinion about Nussmeyer is I think he has more potential and think he can be better only because I haven't seen a lot of him, whether it's Jane Daniels, I have. And I think that's ultimately why it's so tight is like, this goes back to my original comment that we started the show with is that you brought up. Why, if this, if, if Jane Daniels is so great, why is the fourth year junior who started 30 games or 20, however many it was that close in a, quarterback competition with a redshirt freshman who's never started a game in his life and why is the winningest active coach in college football still believe that even though Jaden Daniels got all those reps last week when Nussmeyer hurt his ankle why is it still that way yeah. that's a, a question I cannot answer that's a Brian Kelly question he will answer that in due time it's well, fun. here's the most uh, least controversial comment of the night. I think Brian Kelly is smarter than all you guys. I definitely think he is smarter than us, but he's not willing to come on this podcast and hang out with y'all for an hour. So you're stuck with us, I guess. All right, Nick, go ahead and uh, finish up telling them where, where they can uh, go check you out on Twitter and all that good stuff. Yes. So you can send all your uh, hate tweets, which I gladly accept with love and kindness uh, from everyone, all you Jaden Daniels fans and Nussmeyer fans. At the Nick Diaz, D I A S, spelled with an S, uh, like you see at the bottom, the uh, Nick Diaz. And uh, YouTube page, same name, just type in my name with an S, not with a Z, or you'll get UFC fighters coming up. Mm. Um, and just, you know, my stuff. And then I, I post, um, I also am on Instagram, same thing, at the Nick Diaz as well, same as my Twitter handle. Um, and I post my, um, my YouTube stuff there uh, as well for those of you who aren't subscribed. Well, good stuff. Thank you for coming on, Nick. And look, special shout out to him, guys. I'm telling y'all, I, I maybe 15 minutes before the show, I had to hit him up, bring him on, and he just was a good sport about it. And you know, turned away from the Twitter mob and came on in. And I appreciate him for doing that. Uh, have a great night, Nick. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. Oh, I sent him back a little early there. I didn't mean it. No, no shot at him there. Let me get to a few of y'all's uh, comments here, and then we're going to get into a little bit of our sponsorship -y stuff. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit of recruiting. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to – I actually want to show Kai Preen's highlights and kind of walk through what I see out of him. I know a lot of people are in Baton Rouge. Um, he, he plays for Ascension Cast uh, – or he played – for Ascension Catholic, which is a smaller school. So maybe not as many people have seen him play as, you know, the 5A guys. Hey, I got Cousin Trey in the comments. There are reasons why some guys are coaches and others are, are commentators. Hey, look, Trey, 
Uh, I, I'm not nearly as smart as any of those guys on LSU's coaching staff. If I was, I would go for their jobs and make as much money as them. Instead, I'll be here Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. commentating uh, uh, for your LSU football fix till the end of time, probably. Let's see here. Uh, Nuss started versus Arkansas, actually. Um, no, he, he came in in relief for Max Johnson somewhat early, but he didn't start. Uh, let's see here. Um, cool with different opinions. I'm not cord, uh, cool with some keyboard. Ooh, all right. So it's getting a little testy for this quarterback race. It really is. Um, and I think that what's lost in everybody discussing this quarterback race is doesn't matter our opinions. It really doesn't. And that's why, like, when you're throwing shade at guys or arguing against someone, it really doesn't do you any good to too aggressively trash one guy or another. Cause ultimately, I mean, if your guy you want isn't able to do it, then your team's going to turn to somebody else and you just spent whatever amount of time trashing him. Um, and ultimately the opinion of whoever you're talking to, it doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Because Coach Kelly, I assure you, whoever you're talking to, whether it's Nick, me, uh, someone in the media, Coach Kelly ain't going to them and saying, well, what do you think? What do you think I should do? No. He's been coaching for 30 years. He knows what he wants to do. He's, he's looking for certain things. I don't think he knows yet, but I think tomorrow and Saturday will go a long direction. And um, I think uh, – I think – my dogs are losing their mind <laughs> – <laughs> I think that no matter who the starter is for snap one, it, he's going to have to play exceptionally well. And even if he does, they may still roll out the other guy to see how he looks. It's just kind of Brian Kelly's MO. Ken, all right, let me see if get this last name. I'm going I'm to channel my inner coon ass here. Let's see. Kev Veche wants me to talk tight end. Okay. So I think Cole Taylor is in for a breakout season, not necessarily because I think he's so much better than last year or anything like that. Brian Kelly consistently has his tight end as the number two receiver on his team. Now I'm actually predicting that streak to end because of who LSU has at receiver this year, but my God, man, if he's anywhere near up there, I get the stat line that I'm expecting from Kashan Butte or Malik neighbors, who I, I think are, both in route to an exceptional season if they can stay healthy. I think Cole Taylor might be, if he's anywhere near the number of volume targets that other tight ends at Notre Dame have gotten, he's out for a big season now. He's long, he's lanky, maybe he needs to work on some blocking. Um, the other guy who's been looking really good in practice is uh, uh, Mason Taylor. Of course, he's Jason Taylor's son, the Miami Dolphins, you know, all pro ball, all everything, um, defensive end, and – He's looking sharp. He he might get out there and don't forget about Mashburn, who is an absolute mauler in the trenches. Um, tight end's probably not where he wants it to be, and he's going to have to adjust his scheme flat out. I also think he's going to have to adjust his scheme for running back, especially if anything happens to one of those guys. I think you've got Goodwin. I think you've got uh, Noah Kane, and you've got John Emery. And in practice, they haven't necessarily looked great this far. I mean, I'm hearing from the scrimmage that the leader, the leader of those guys had like 21 yards. So not exactly a great scrimmage for the running backs. Well, you need quality snaps out of three guys because for the last five years, uh, Brian Kelly has had three running backs with 40 or more carries. That's not a coincidence. Just like it's not a coincidence that his tight end is his number two uh, catcher on his teams consistently. That is his system. That is by design. So if one of those running backs rolls ankle, which I can't really remember a season where you're looking at a football team and they didn't have one running back roll an ankle, then you know, you're turning to Josh Williams or you're adjusting your system. And Josh Williams, although a very good player, he's not the blue chipper that we're used to seeing as LSU's fourth running back. I mean, just if you go look at LSU the last 20 years, almost every single year, your fourth string running back is going to be probably like, you know, a top 100 player in the country freshman or something like that. Like, it's just, that's what you get from LSU. So I, I think that those two position groups are lacking the depth and might 
make them adjust their system a little bit. We might see a little more like spread RPO like wrinkles. I don't want to say like they're going to change their whole offense, but I think you might see some wrinkles. I haven't been at practice as in depth as like Mike Scarborough has on Saturday. I'm going to get a really good look. So I'll let y'all know, but I, I imagine that I, we, we could anticipate seeing some newer things that you haven't actually seen out of Brian Kelly in the past. Uh, I'm going to get to a few more of y'all's comments. If y'all got anything you want to talk about, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm going to thank a very good sponsor tonight. Dead Soxy. Uh, Dead Sox is ready for football this season, y'all. Uh, they are, um, giving you an opportunity to score a free pair of socks on their website, deadsoxy.com. While you're there, don't forget your promo code, TigerBait. You're going to get 25% off your order if they ever do any sort of promo, like Christmas or whatever bundle thing. Okay, use the code TigerBait. It gets you all of it. And you're letting them know that 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 our show is sending them business. You're, you're showing our sponsor that their dollar spent to support this show is worth it. So I would appreciate it if you went there and used it. Of course, I love Dead Soxy Socks. Uh, don't forget to visit their team colors page and choose the color combination you're interested in. Not just purple and gold. They have black and gold. And I, I guess I'm copyright approved to say they have Mardi Gras colors as well. So step into the season in style with dead socks. And y'all look, whether it's the footies, okay, very thin, very light, very good for this, you know, hot, humid Louisiana climate. Love them. Okay. They got a bunch of the LSU color socks. They have the no slip little uh, uh, guards. There's silicone dots on the top of the sock that prevent it from sliding down your leg. I know if y'all wear like dress socks or anything, if y'all like me, those suckers are basically rolled around your ankle at the end of the day. Look at the Mardi Gras, great design on that. Uh, if you want to, you know, do some interesting design, these are all super soft. If you're looking to impress someone this season uh, with a gift, these are a great gift to go with. Here's your Saints color socks, all sorts of combinations with that. Great for a work sock, y'all. If y'all wear dress shoes or whatever to work, it, it works excellently for that. All right, let's get to some comments. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Hey, look, man, Carl the Cat. At the end of the day, it's sports. It's not life or death. Man, Carl the Cat with a great comment there. I, I, I agree. Uh, that's why like, I don't ever uh, attack amateur athletes too hard unless it's like a morally corrupt thing which i I've, I've been blessed with i haven't had too much of that since I've, I've if any since i've started here so it's really not worth going up in arms over this y'all it really isn't like i'm never going to try to win an argument um I, I remember like sometimes like uh some people say oh preston you got roasted on that i'm like well you know look man i'm not going to sit here and tear down a teenager playing football because you disagree with me and I need to win this stupid argument. Go on with your life, man. I, I got better things to do than tear down teenagers. I'm not going to do that. I will argue for what I want. I will try to be fair in telling you why I don't think somebody's as good as they are. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and bash any young man who wants to play a sport because we're arguing. I refuse. I refuse. And I think if you are going to the point where you're berating young men's over what's going on in sports, whether it's Brennan, a lot of people were harassing him, calling him a quitter, dude, get a life. It, he, it's not like he quit, you know, he's working for you and you're paying him money and he decided not to show up. People make decisions for their future, man. You don't know anything about what's going on with his mental health, his physical health, his emotional health, his family, none of that. So yeah, I, I'm not going to sit there. Yeah. Great point by Carl Dunn. Y'all, I got, I ran into Carl actually uh, this summer for the 707 camp. He was a ref there. It was really cool. He, he recognized me and called me out. So uh, I, I tell people, you know, if y'all ever see me in public, call me out say, Hey man, I watch your show, whatever. I love it. I promise you. Uh, it's cool. It was really cool for the national championship, getting to meet a bunch of fans like that. Always do what Carl did and just say, hey, Preston, what's up, man? I watch your show. Tell me your name and, and all that good stuff. I, I love that stuff, y'all. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. All right, I think all these comments are a little dated at this point. Let's look at Kai Preen, y'all, because this is a really good commitment for LSU. Uh, stop. 
Uh, he is a he's six foot one ninety, and he's a thick. He's long. He's got long arms, but he, he's also a, a pretty stout player. Uh, y'all, y'all are gonna see in just a second. I'm, I'm gonna go watch these plays with y'all here. But he plays for Ascension Catholic here. Um, and you know, you can see that this is not, it's a little bit of a smaller, it's 1A football. But I mean, look at that improv right there. He catches the book, quarterback rolls out, he just catches it and looks like a grown man running around kids out there. And that's what he should look like. Uh, he's big, long arms, and he's also like strong. That's what I. This is what I like about him. Is is he's a guy who can pull a ball out of the air. Uh, he's he's Jamar Chase esque in his build. Obviously, I'm not predicting him to come and win the Bolitnikov or anything like that. But he's a quality player, and he's in your state. Um, he transferred to St. James this year, uh, and he'll be ineligible to play, uh, from what I'm understanding. Uh, that's unfortunate. I actually am opposed to any rule ever that says a teenager, a child cannot play a sport because the grownups watching thinks it's unfair for another team. I, I will never support any LHSAA and eligibility. I don't care. Recruiting. I don't care. I don't care. Let the children play sports. Y'all that's what we're talking about as children playing sports. Shut up. Anyways, easy, you know, good, solid route running. Um, a lot of these guys in this one, I just, just cannot even keep up with him. As you can see, he's just blowing past guys. Uh, he, he, he wants to stay up. He doesn't want to just run for speed and open space. Like, like he wants you hit him. He, he wants to, to drag you with him. Um, so <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's, that's a good player to get quietly, quietly. Brian Kelly now with seven in-state guys. You got Lance Hurd still sitting there, y'all. I mean, we're talking about number six offensive tackle in the country. You need Lance Hurd, and from I'm I'm hearing good things about Lance Hurd. I think I think he's LSU's to lose. Uh, he'll be committing on September first. Uh, outside of him, you also still do have Caden Jones. I wonder if uh, LSU is going to seal the deal with huge offensive tackle, not highly rated, three-star guy, but he's in your state and he's 6'7", 305. <laughs> I would, I would prefer LSU to uh, seal the deal on him. Um, but, but outside of that, I mean, you, you haven't done terrible in state. I mean, there's a few guys going out, Curly Reed, Omarion Miller, um, we talked about a bunch of the guys earlier, but I mean, I think guys who were super important, you got to get one of these quarterbacks, got to get Caleb Jackson. I think Caleb Jackson is an absolute freak show, y'all. Um, Shelton Sampson, a five star receiver. You don't want that five star receiver getting out. I don't care if he got bumped down on the star ratings today. I'm still, I, I consider Shelton Sampson, in my opinion, a low five star. Um, reminds me a lot of uh, Terrence Tolliver, actually. Um, uh, Trey Trey Holly is another one you really didn't want leaving. I think I think the ones leaving that actually hurt Jordan Matthews hurts, but you see that there's a lot of guys on LSU's board out of state at that you know corner position who might make up for that. Derek Williams is a guy who hurts. He's five stars, obviously, um, but they're still going to work on him. We'll see. That's not over yet. We'll have to see on him, um, and. LSU is also, I mean, Kylan Jackson is is no shabby player whatsoever. All righty. I'm going to thank Tremontes once again for being our title sponsor this evening and making our show possible. Y'all go support them. They're your tailgating and home gating uh, headquarters for the 2022 season. They've currently got a bourbon raffle going on on their site. So if you're a big bourbon fan, go check it out. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you got to buy a few tickets and uh, you get a chance to win some. I mean, we're talking like uh, it's it's tens of thousands of dollars of whiskey they're raffling out, y'all. So if you love high-end whiskey, if you're a whiskey guy, you'll recognize what's on the list. I'm not that much of a whiskey guy, but it's good stuff. And they got their meat sale coming the 22nd of this month. So y'all go check out Tremonti's. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. 
daily lunch specials, and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontese.com. And that is Tremontese. Y'all go check them out. Let them know that um, Tiger Bait sent you there so that our sponsors know that you're showing their support. I'm going to go through a few comments here. Miles Brennan was just facing reality and made that choice that was best for him in his career. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, I, you know, and yeah, it's time to move on from, from Miles Brennan and all that good stuff. Um, but it is what it is. Trey, Trey, cousin Trey, great show. Thank you. What's good. Uh, golden boot podcast. Appreciate y'all. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. I try to make sure I go through all the comments, see if I catch any, uh, any good ones here. I try not to leave out the good comments. Um, mm -hmm. I saw one. Let's see here. Mick Griff says he's nervous with either quarterback. I'll tell you this. Uh, that triggered a thought that I had in my head. Um, the downsides of both quarterbacks, if we see them play as poorly as the, at their poorest that they've played in their college career, LSU will be in trouble. I tend to believe that you won't, you'll, you'll see improved play. Let's see here. Whoever the quarterback ends up being, they will only be as good as the offensive line plays. It's a very good point. The offensive line is looking like it's dramatically improved. I'm actually thinking that the offensive line might be one of the most improved units in the country this year. Um, we'll just have to see. Um, and uh, because, I mean, they, they didn't give up hardly any sacks in the scrimmage. Um, I, I, and they, they handled an elite unit with a defensive uh, Mason Smith and all those guys were, were getting after him. I think a uh, final spot of the night. I have to thank uh, one of our new sponsors, uh, celebrity theaters. Um, celebrity theaters is locally owned in Baton Rouge. Uh, they have locations in Broussard, uh, locations in Ruston and uh, locations in Baton Rouge. Of course, that Baton Rouge one was just renovated and it is, incredibly nice because they're locally owned you're guaranteed a clean facility better pricing superior customer service state-of-the-art technology baton rouge locations uh they have an invigorating arcade with over 50 games in it so great to take your kids there they have uh frozen daiquiris and all that good stuff y'all go check them out tell them you were sent in by tigerbait.com they also offer their weekly specials party renovations uh um i'm sorry party reservations or um, events for work or whatever, catering. Y'all go check them out. Great theater. All right, guys, get any comments you want to get in here before we head out. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to tell y'all that it's been a wild week. LSU quarterback competition narrowing down. A lot of position battles kind of settling in. I saw the team photo today, and I realized that this is – the most new faces in a team photo that I I can ever recall seeing at LSU. So many new faces, and uh, they've done a great job restocking the cabinet. Um, great job restocking the cabinet, in my opinion. So uh, it's just will all those pieces work together? Will they will they be able to meet their potential? Will they work well? Will they will they have good chemistry? Or, or will they be as good as they were in their, their previous spot, as good as they were, you know, labeled to be? Obviously, the more of those guys you have that are supposed to be good, the more chances you have that someone one of those guys is actually good. So we'll see. Oh, someone actually asked me about the kicker earlier, and shoot, man, no one knows yet. I don't even think Brian Polian knows. I had him on the show Um first week this year actually so if y'all want to go back go back two weeks and look up the show with brian polian i'll tell carl that too man go watch the brian polian show i had we went through it all i think that malik neighbors is probably your front runner to return kicks uh, don't know who the kicker is going to be I, my guess would be nathan dybert just guessing uh the punter is in good shape bramblet uh he he's about as good of a transfer as you could have possibly asked for um so that that's that's how that 
shapes up to me. We'll have to see. Well, guys, I appreciate you all y'all watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get all the notifications when we go live. Mike's got his show. He does Wednesday nights. He'll be here tomorrow with Buddy Sonji. Uh, of course, I'll be um, doing post-game shows with Mike after every game. So y'all come check it out. I believe we're going to try some in-the-car shows. We're going to Florida State for, at the Superdome. We'll be uh, in the press box, and then afterward we'll be driving home from New Orleans uh, doing a full show for y'all in that. Positive vibes for this year's team. That's right, BK Takeover. Thank y'all for watching your LSU football fix. Remember to tune in next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Y'all have a wonderful evening.